There are only 18 days until you cast your vote in the 2020 presidential election. And not long thereafter, the potential future of the Affordable Care Act and millions of Americans' health care will be voted on in the Supreme Court. Connecting Point's Derek Kennedy discussed the impact of filling the highest court's open seat pre-election with her guest, Washington Post journalist Emma Brown. When you watch the hearings, uh, you know, the four days of hearings or three days plus one where people could voice their opinions after the hearings, was there anything that stood out to you that was not shared with the public? Well, Amy Coney Barrett, there were there were a few things um, that came up after she submitted all of her, you know, many hundreds of pages of of uh, answers to the to the Senate's questions before the hearing. There are a few things that came up um, where she had not submitted them. For example, she signed on to an advertisement that ran in the South Bend Tribune um, by a pro life group um, that you know was critical of Roe v. Wade. Was um, um, very uh, anti-abortion and she hadn't included that in in her um responses to the senate um that she she gave a couple of talks so in the in her responses she's supposed to list every talk that she's given or public talk and, and there were a few that she had left out including two pro-life groups at notre dame and so um she submitted some information about these in a supplemental questionnaire on the eve of her hearing um but the the you know her her expression of her sort of anti-abortion views as a personal i mean excuse me as a a private citizen before she became a judge three years ago did has caused um concern on the left and among democrats who are worried she will be a vote to strike down roe yeah and, and that's a very good point i guess when we look at this as just regular voters right as we're sitting back watching this unfold you know, some may say, well, what's the big deal? Can, can you help explain to our viewers, you know, as this process is being hurried uh, for her confirmation, uh, for her appointment, you know, what's the damage of the rush and of maybe someone with that background being pushed into this seat pre-election? Well, I think the reason that this is a controversial nomination, um, there's two reasons. One, as you said, this is happening at the last minute um, as the election is underway. Um, and uh, the last time a seat came open in the last year of a president's term, um, which was Antonin Scalia's seat during President Obama's term, Senate Republicans refused to fill it. Um, and in this case, it's much later in the process. It's just weeks before the election and Senate Republicans are hurrying to fill it. And so that um, the difference between these two seats and how they've been treated it, uh, has been one cause of controversy. Another cause of controversy, of course, is that Ruth Bader Ginsburg was a reliable liberal vote on the court. Um, and if Amy Coney Barrett takes that seat, she will, she will uh, likely be on the opposite side of that spectrum. She describes herself as an originalist who interprets the constitution and laws as they were meant to, meant by the people who wrote them, um, which uh, in the mold of Antonin Scalia, who was her mentor. And so he was a um, one of the court's most reliable conservative votes and uh, she is likely to be as well. You know, and it's, it's uh, uh, as a woman, I'm very happy that, you know, that she's a woman and it's possible that she, you know, could, could grab this seat to fill the Ginsburg seat, but because of her views, um, you know, a lot of voters and a lot of women are feeling a little bit anxious if she does get this seat, right? Because she may not think uh, for maybe the betterment of, you know, women voters. Well, she has said over and over as she's been quizzed about her own personal views on issues like abortion and same-sex marriage and so on, that she would never impose her personal convictions upon the law, that she interprets everything carefully, uh, as I said, in the way that the writers of the law meant at the time. Um, but she would be a fifth, you know, she, she, would, she would cement a conservative majority on the court. Um, and with cases coming, as the with Democrats said over and over during her hearing, the uh, Affordable Care Act um, law is being challenged in a case that will be heard by the Supreme Court the week after the election. Um, and so there are just a number of issues where uh, she she's, could cast a deciding vote on, on um, cases that are very controversial. Yeah, she would make it uh, six to three, right? It would be so conservative. And with the Obamacare 
Affordable Care Act coming up, like you said, just a week later, it's possible that, you know, over 20 million Americans could lose their coverage. So when we sit back and we say, well, what's the big deal? This, this is a Christian lady. She's a mother. She's got a multiracial family. All of that is, is swell and it's great. You know, I think women and voters just sit back and say, what's the bigger picture? And the truth is, Americans could lose health insurance if she is that, you know, de deciding vote. Yeah, and she said during the hearing that she is, um, you know, not hostile to the Affordable Care Act. She said that repeatedly. Um, she had criticized uh, Roberts, Chief Justice Roberts' decision in a previous challenge to the case, though, which has led some people to believe that um, that she would be a vote against uh, against the law. It, you know, it the law the the issue that is coming before the court in the week after the election is different than the one that, that the court has ruled on before, of course. So it's not entirely clear that we know how she would vote, but it is entirely clear that she is an originalist who, um, who, who takes a very limited view of what the text says. You know, she tries to interpret exactly what the text meant at the time that it was written. At the time that it was written, which had hardly anything of what we go through um, day to day. Um, after watching the hearings, uh, did, you, did you feel that she maybe convinced any Democrats to want to go ahead and, and confirm her? I think uh, after watching the hearing, I, I felt like there um, was not a lot of change on either side. Um, I guess there might be a few votes in play. Um, there's some question. I think President Trump tweeted just this morning some question about whether Senator Susan Collins, for example, of Maine will, will vote for Amy Coney Barrett. But um, I think at the end of the hearing, it felt pretty clear that she was on a glide path to uh, confirmation. Very interesting. Um, lots of votes coming up. And, and let me ask you, do you think that there will be maybe a last minute ditch effort uh, by the Dems, by the Democrats to try and stop this vote? We do know that we heard in the hearings there were uh, several um, opposing views, uh, obviously several that were more than several that were for her, but several opposing views, maybe some lawsuits could be coming up? I, you know, I'm, I'm not aware of any um, m procedural maneuver or other sort of tactic that the Democrats can use if the Republicans have the majority vote, which they seem to have.